Good evening. I'm Stacey Amos for News Channel 8, and these are the top stories that we have for you tonight. A mysterious death of a married couple on St. Thomas. Potholes on St. Croix cause a horrible accident, and we've got the exclusive. Another stabbing at Golden Grove Prison that makes this five in 16 days. And Bunny Whaler is not happy with the new film, Marley. Those stories and more are up next for you on News Channel 8. <laughs> In our top story tonight, the VIPD are investigating the death of a married couple on St. Thomas. Here's VIPD spokesperson Melody Rames with the details. Police on St. Thomas are investigating the suspicious deaths of a married couple in the Cassie Hill section of St. Thomas. The body of a male was found outside a private home and the body of a female was found inside the home. On Monday, April 30th at about 9.30 a.m., police were dispatched to investigate the unresponsive body of a male that was found a little over a thousand feet from a private residence. The cause of death was not immediately evident to police officers. During the investigation, police entered into a nearby residence and discovered the unresponsive body of a female. Again, the cause of death was not immediately evident to police officers. The couple appeared to be in their 50s, police said. The names of the victims are being withheld pending notification of next of kin. The victims were transported to the Roy Lester Schneider Regional Medical Center morgue. Police said the cause of death will be determined by the medical examiner. This case is being followed up by the major crime unit, and detectives urge anyone who knows anything about these deaths to call major crime detectives at 642-8449. You can also call Crime Stoppers at 1-800-222-TIPS or 911. And as always, if you know something, please say something. Call the VIPD, 911, or Crime Stoppers at 1-800-222-TIPS. In other news, it's no secret that the potholes on St. Croix are a hazard for drivers. Earlier this afternoon in the Estate Ruby area, a driver lost control of her vehicle and is lucky to be alive. News Channel 8's Wes Small files this exclusive story. Thanks a lot, Stacy. You know, I really didn't want to do another Potholes in Paradise story, but this could be tragic. Here's the ambulance coming right now. It's another News Channel 8 exclusive. We're right by Graham's auto body, right up from the hospital. Ten minutes ago, potholes, which we're going to show you and we're going to tell you about. Look across the street. Look at the tragedy that has happened here. We have a young lady waiting to be picked up by the ambulance right now. we got emergency responders here. Here's what we believe happened. These potholes are so bad that we've got at least five or six blowouts a day. The sad thing is, the sad thing is we have the triathlon coming here now. And again, attention is not paid to our roads until the triathlon is here. But now look at what's happened. Look at the tragedy. If you think these potholes don't cause damage to human lives, look at this. She had rolled up that hill, again, trying to avert the deadly potholes that we have here. Traffic is backed up. There, I'm going to go up the road and show you these deadly potholes that we have here. EMTs, emergency responders, live, right on the scene. You only see this on News Channel 8 once again and this exclusive report. What does it have to take to get the roads and the infrastructure of the Virgin Islands handled in a more suitable manner? Is this what we have to have? We have a lady there, thank God, she had her seatbelts on, but she had to go up that hill, almost ended up upside down. Now you know why News Channel 8 does these stories, Potholes in Paradise. Have you ever seen them? Oh, we have seen a lot of your different stories, yeah. but this one is very important. You can't just fix for the triathlon. you got to fix for the rest of the people. Thank you very much. Please proceed with caution. Thank you very much. Wow. Well, there you have it. Words echoed by this reporter just a few seconds ago. This is not scripted. This is not planned. This is not staged. This is real. I want you to look at these deadly potholes that that poor lady tried to avert. What does it take? 
And I guess this is not a triathlon route, is it? Because they don't have the magic markers. They don't have, look, they have rocks here. How are we living? And there's no circles here. Why? Because the triathlon does not go up this road. Well, as we wrap this up, I hope that lady will be okay. She's a little shaken up and she's in tears, poor thing. But I told her the worst part is over. Thank God you are buckled up. Now you know why you need to have your seat belts on at all times. Now you know why we need to get the potholes fixed and the infrastructure before more people get hurt or even killed on the roads. In the state Ruby, near Rams Auto Body and Queens Quarters, I'm Wes Small. Look what happened on News Channel 8. We ask all of our viewers to please buckle up and use your seatbelts. It can be a lifesaver, literally. Now, another inmate has been stabbed at the Golden Grove Prison on St. Croix. News Channel 8's Wes Small has more. Sounds like a broken record, doesn't it? Right in the same spot all the time. Lockdown. Another inmate stabbed. I want to take you back to April 14th. April 14th, that is when... Uh, we had two inmates stabbed and another injured. So then we have three. Then it was April 24th, lockdown again, shakedown, unknown person, stabbed, third degree assault. Now, six days later, April 30th, we have another prisoner now stabbed, reportedly in intensive care unit. This is unofficial. I did talk to police chief Hal. He knows about it. I did talk to the AG's office. They know about it. Remember, this prison is in no longer control of the Attorney General's office, not under the control of Department of Justice. It is under the control of the Bureau of, Co of Corrections. I just put in a call for Director Wilson, and he will try to get back to me. Right now, then, I have been on the line with Jewel Anderson, Bureau of Corrections spokesperson. She is aware of this latest stabbing. I want to remind you, Again, this is about the third incident, fourth incident of violence within, you do the math, just 16 days. Numerous inmates being hospitalized. Again, on the verge, on the edge of consent decree, a federal takeover. Probably at lockdown again, Golden Grove Prison, another incident of violence here with another inmate reportedly, unofficially, stabbed. The incident, we believe, happened yesterday in the area of around 5 o'clock. Again, at the outskirts of Golden Grove Prison, I'm Wes Small for News Channel 8. We now have information that a suspect is now in custody. He is 39-year-old David Rios, who has been charged with assault in the third degree for stabbing a male in the back and bail has been set for 25000 Rios was also a suspect in a November 2011 shooting in the Estate Glen area. You might remember that. We'd like to thank both VIPD spokesperson Melody Rains and Bureau of Corrections spokesperson Jewel Anderson for their help in providing us with that information. Well, it's day two of school buses not running and still no word from the Department of Education. Earlier today, News Channel 8's Wes Small caught up with Senator Sanis about the situation. I have to take this time while I do have you here, Senator, about uh, looks like $700,000 uh, rounding out to the, there's your almost a million dollars. Again, it falls in you legislators laps. You heard your um, your comrade, your co-senator there, yes. uh, Janet Mellon Young, Senator. She's not happy. She's a mother. You're, you're a dad. Senator, what do, you, what do you have to say about this situation? I'm very much disappointed right now because the fact of the matter is, is this thing could have been avoided. It could have been avoided. Senator Millignon made it clear in her prepared statement that at one point or the other, the money was there and it wasn't taken advantage of. And my thing is, is that, you know, where are our, where are our priorities? Where are our priorities? Our, our children are supposed to be no, our number one priority, and we really dropped the ball. And I just hope that this thing is uh, rectified as soon as possible, because it's totally ridiculous that we mismanage, I, I should say the word, mismanage uh, these funds. Because if they were not uh, properly appropriated, it's all about mismanagement. All right, so we'll have to find out what's going on later, because apparently Senator Young didn't even have the 
opportunity to talk to any member for the Department of Education. I have to say that I think that's shameful that you guys in the Education Commission couldn't even get any words from the Department of Ed Education. Well, uh, on her behalf, I know that she's trying uh, very hard to, uh, to rectify this problem, to help them out. I myself called the Department of Education and I spoke to a couple of individuals today, you know, offering whatever type of assistance they need. And I, like I said before, I do hope that we rectify this as soon as possible. Thank you, Senator Sammy Sands, on the bus situation, leaving our children stranded. This just in, good news. School buses will be running tomorrow, Wednesday, May 2nd. After being offline for two days, they will be running tomorrow, Wednesday, May 2nd, according to Department of Education officials. Now, in other news, former Havenza employees met with our delegate to Congress, Donna Christensen. Congresswoman Christensen attended and submitted testimony for the record at Thursday afternoon's Joint Economic Committee hearing on gas prices in the Northeast and the impact to the consumer on the loss of refining capacity. Congresswoman Christensen wrote, it is imperative that I lend my voice and the voice of my constituents to the discussion being had today. They are also represented in the audience by Ira Hobson and Oswin Newton, two members of the steelworkers who are among the recently laid off workers. Congresswoman Christensen also wrote about the impact to the community and to the price and availability of energy. Now, why doesn't Bunny like the new film Marley? That's coming up next in your Caribbean Report. Now, here's your Caribbean Report. From the Caribbean, ESPN this week will introduce ESPN FC, a new multi-language and multi-country brand for soccer fans around the world across TV, radio, print, online, and mobile. Just in time for the 2012 UEFA European Football Championship, the new offering will bring together all of ESPN's soccer properties and house them under one universally recognized name. From Antigua, the search has begun for a new chief executive officer for regional carrier Liat following the resignation yesterday of Brian Challenger. He steps down officially on June 30th, ending three years of being at the helm of an airline which has seen much turbulence, including several bouts of region-wide industrial action and public wrangling with the workers' bargaining agents. CFO Julie Reefer-Jones will act in the interim. From Barbados, Rihanna is truly showing no signs of slowing down anytime fast. It was revealed that she has been cast to play a villainous role in the upcoming blockbuster, The Fast and the Furious 6. The Udawan singer will star in the movie alongside Vin Diesel and Dwayne The Rock Johnson. From Jamaica, Neville Bunny Whaler Livingston, the lone surviving member of the legendary reggae group The Whalers, is not happy with the final cut of the film documentary Marley, although he is featured prominently in the film offering insights and anecdotes regarding Bob Marley's personal and professional life. Whaler insists that when he saw the final cut, there was a major part of Bob Marley's life that was inadequately portrayed, his Rastafarian beliefs. According to Whaler, Rastafari was what Robert Marley sang about all his life. Rasta music is a legacy he has left us. When I looked, I did not see an emphasis on Rasta, our faith and the influence that this had on the man, Robert Marley. I was not pleased with that, he told the Jamaica Observer. Marley is the first official documentary on the life and work of reggae icon Bob Marley, and Marley's eldest son, Ziggy, was the executive producer of the film. From St. Martin, the Daily Herald reports that the first private screening of the locally made film Baby Needs Milk received a standing ovation last Friday evening, where apparently the 50-minute film directed by Rick James, the Daily Herald's layout designer, was made on a shoestring budget. The film, which was made over six months, traces the descent into despair of young couple Spit, who's played by reggae star Junior Lyon in the lead role, and Vanessa, played by Sasha Blake, who struggle to make ends meet and keep their baby child fed. From Puerto Rico, WBA junior middleweight champion Miguel Cotto's Cuban coach Pedro Diaz will reportedly make the move to Puerto Rico to run a new gym in Caguas. According to reports, Diaz will train and help prepare boxers who are under contract with Miguel Cotto promotions. Diaz will be working in Cotto's corner this Saturday night at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas when he defends the WBA 154-pound title against Floyd Mayweather Jr. From Nevis, the 14.5 million Eastern Caribbean dollar state-of-the-art Nevis Performing Arts Center was officially opened with a grand ceremony highlighted by musical, theatrical, and dance presentations on Saturday. The center, located in Pinese Estate, was funded primarily by the government of the Republic of China on Taiwan. It was designed by IXI Design in St. Martin. And in your cricket update, ICBL Empire players breached the Barbados Cricket Association's code of conduct seven times last year, and one of their leading players will serve a multiple match suspension at the start of the new season. 25-year-old Javon Sears, who recently made a successful return to the Barbados team, 
team during the WICB Regional Four-Day Competition has been slapped with a seven-match ban starting this Saturday for varying offenses in the 2011 domestic competition. Be sure to check our Facebook page for all full details on the stories reported in the Caribbean Report. Now, St. Patrick's is celebrating their 146th anniversary, and News Channel 8's Wes Small was at the event in Fredericksted earlier today. I'm here now with Father Patrick Lynch, who just had him on a few weeks ago for St. Joseph's, and here one of the alumni. Senator Sammy Sanders. No, not one of the alumni, it's one of the supporters. Oh, okay. Okay. Hey, well, I know Poppy Pops was an alumni. Yes, yes, yes. And Joe Christopher, just like I was telling you, who played third base. I know my dad is smiling, you know, because he used to love some Joe Christopher. Mm -hmm. Trust me, and Joe Christopher from St. Croix. That's, That's right. right. Oh. What does this mean, uh, not only for you, Senator, as a supporter, but for you, Father, always? Um, here for the Catholic Church and our lovely children and this, these are some beautiful children performing for us right now and it's a beautiful food fair uh, a collection of, of a taste of St. Patrick's That's right. the Caribbean. Yeah, Caribbean what does this mean to our society right now especially these are some dire times Father. yes well you know the wonderful thing about America is it's a it's a combination of public and private uh, groups helping and uh, assisting each other and you know for many years uh, on St. Croix the public school system unfortunately wasn't able to always cope with the students and so St. Patrick's is uh, an outgrowth of a great need the religious sisters came from Belgium priests came from Belgium and the United States and started this school as a, a benefit not just to Catholics but to anyone who was looking for an education and education is very important and now uh, St. Croix has a good public school system too but I think the private sector working in, <clears throat> in cooperation with the public sector is very important in many things and especially in education where there's a full range of uh, educational opportunities and uh, experiences. Thank you, Father. Well said. Senator Sammy Sanders, what does this mean to you in well, a time like this? You know, St. Patrick is more than just a school. It's a tradition. It's part of our culture. It's part of Fredericksted. And to me, coming together today, it, it is wonderful. As you can hear the kids in the background singing, they, uh, dancing. As you can see, the people here, we're going to be uh, partaking very soon in this wonderful lunch. It smells great, by the way. I can hardly wait. wait, I'm telling you. <laughs> but, you know, like I said before, this is part of our culture. St. Patrick has been with us for many years, mm -hmm. and they're going to remain with us for many years. What does it mean, Miss Dower, to do this uh, with the taste of the Caribbean and for the community at dire times in our educational system like we face now? Yeah. Well, it means a lot as we celebrate from this day because uh, the association members, we want to give back to the school, give back to the community, and this is our way of doing it by supporting the school. Today is a school's function. This food fair, this Caribbean food fair is a school's function, and we're supporting them. On Saturday, we're doing a parade, and that is in conjunction with, with uh, Fungus Day and also our elegant tea party on Sunday, May 6th. But the main point of our board, our Alumni Association board, is to give back to the school. Last but not least, Principal Elizabeth Jean Baptiste. What a beautiful name, beautiful lady here. What a beautiful event. You must be uh, happy. You're beaming right now. This is fantastic. Okay? Indeed I am. It's a pleasure to work for St. Patrick's School. We have a beautiful campus and um, our teachers are very dedicated. Our parents are very supportive and the students are excited about learning and we can only grow. We keep growing and growing academically, spiritually and socially. Happy 146 to St. Pat's. I'm Wes Small for News Channel 8. We'd like to collectively say here at News 8, congratulations to all the alumni and students at St. Patrick's. What a wonderful event. Coming up, Matt and Niall shares an important event with you. This newscast has been sponsored by Mario's Virgin Crystal. Let us save you the hassle of lugging those jugs around. Purified bottled water conveniently delivered to your home or office. Also available in your favorite grocery store. Call 773-2810.
starting tomorrow, there will be a conference called Women Wise, featuring our own community activist and local entertainer, Mara Nile. Here's News Channel 8's Wes Small with the details. Here I am with the lovely Mara Nile, positive. We're talking about Women Wise, and it's May 2nd. It's going to be Rock City St. Thomas, Charlotte Molly High School, and then it's going to be here at the complex at 630. And Mata Nile, it's always an honor and a privilege to be talking to you, a real superstar, local. You might be. You're still a superstar in my eyes. Yeah. We have a lot going on, but the focus is going to be what women can do in their lives to make their lives better in the community and at home. And welcome, and I know you got an important message for tonight. Yeah, well, it's it's basic woman wise. Um, it's it's a female aspect of the man up. You know, our our aim should be to the women because believe it or not, men may not like to hear it, but we women are the mothers of the earth. Doesn't matter where it come from. Without us, there wouldn't be a you. So in that aspect, you know, Rashidi decided to come about with a woman wise just like the man up we have to start empowering our young ladies to let them know that you know it's not all about the glitz and the glamour it's not all about the hardest goal it's about you it's about your aspirations where you are where you intend to go and we always must always remember where we came from as black women and just women women of the earth of the world in all you know, just are wrong. So we're not just targeting women. We actually go into the schools for the junior high and high school girls because that's where we all know the itching starts and the curiosity. But to be honest, the youths of today are not as curious as I was because there's so much information out there that they can go for the right information. But it's sad to see that some of them still do get caught up in the negative. But you know, you, you need the negative to let them know there is something positive in a sense. That's how I take the negative. You know, if, if everything is always positive, then you don't know what's wrong. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? So this message, what we're doing this time is just, it'll be me and Cecile will be having a performance. And it's just, like I said, it's just to show the youths, especially the ladies, I was a single, I came up in a single parent home. My mom had a significant other, but my father was, it wasn't, you know, I was a base family structure, but my mom still managed to teach me about that alpha and omega and that oneness, even though she was a single parent. So right now the message that we're trying to send out is just, you know, take care of yourself, focus, set a goal and diligently, constantly work towards it. Keep your faith up and believe in yourself as young ladies. You have to respect yourself to receive that respect. Mala now, tomorrow, and then the next day, 6.30, Charlotte and Molly, and then the next day, Complex. Come on, bless me up with a little tune before we go out. I'm Wes Small for News Channel 8. This is what you're gonna get. Dream big, never smile. Even with your back against the wall, dream big. Never smile, no ain't no time for go style. Dream big, never smile, even with your back against the wall. Dream big, never smile. Jello will conquer it all.